Okay. Yeah, so in SQL, there are lots of ways to vectorize um, things. We have different vector types. We're going to be going over these, um, as well as scalar and vector instructions. Uh, we're going to learn about horizontal and vertical vectorization. We're going to learn how to write explicit vector code using these uh, SQL vector types. Uh, and we're going to look at swizzles. OK, so yeah, we know that GPUs, SIMD CPUs, and other accelerators are vector processors. Uh, so they can execute vector instructions. And they're single instructions which perform load stores uh, or operations such as add or multiply on multiple elements at once. OK, so in the context of, say, Perlmutter and GPUs, uh, most, most um, say, you know, adds operations, say, like adds times minuses, uh, usually are not vectorized within your GPU. Your GPU, say, work item doesn't have the complexity to do that usually. Um, but it certainly has the, the, the ability to do vector loads and stores. And you can actually get significant speed ups from just doing vector loads and stores. Uh, but the compiler as well should do this for you automatically uh, if you write nice code. Um, yeah, so vectorization is the process of uh, changing our scalar code into vectorized code. Um, yeah, the compiler can do it for you, or you can do it. You can ask the compiler uh, more explicitly to do it for you. Um, so there aren't really, so even with the SQL vec types, there aren't necessarily explicit guarantees um, that a SQL vec instruction will generate a, a, a VEC, say, backend instruction. But uh, usually it does, and we certainly hope that it does. But there, there aren't really that many guarantees, which is why the, the SQL VEC interface was, it's, it's sort of deprecated, but anyway. OK, horizontal vectorization. This is if we have just some scalar operations, and then the compiler says, aha, we can do this uh, using vector instructions. Um, yeah, so it's instead of doing scalar loads of 0, 1, 2, 3, we just do a vector load, uh, vector add, vector store, that kind of thing. OK, vertical or explicit vectorization is, is done when we use these vector types explicitly. So we use these inbuilt, inbuilt uh, vector types, the sickle vec class, as well as the sickle MRA class. Um, yeah, we'll go over uh, both of these. And they generally achieve, uh, achieve the same results. Um, uh, so vertical vectorization using these inbuilt vector types, they can make your code more simple uh, and readable. So uh, especially if we have, say, a, um, let's say a pixel, which is RGBA, um, instead of uh, thinking about this as four individual data points, we can instead think of it as a single pixel, which has size, say, float four. Um, this is a kind of a user-friendly interface. OK. Um, yeah, so it can impact the ma mapping of work items to processing elements. Um, yeah, I suppose that's true. That's, yeah, um, it's not always a one-to-one -one mapping. Yeah, so that's, that's quite a subtle point, maybe. Um, we don't, re so we're saying that, um, so the, the number of, kind of work items doing the job uh, when things are vectorized mightn't be all of our work items. That's that's quite a subtle point, and we're, we're not really going to think about that too much. OK, so the vec class uh, this is in our SQL namespace, and we represent explicit vectors in SQL. The valid number of elements are 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 16. Uh, because of OpenCL, the, the um, three element vectors uh, are padded to the size of 4. OK, and this is not true of our MRA type, which we will see. OK, and we have these aliases, which are very, very neat. Uh, so we just say using float4. Or sorry, we don't need to say this is, this is done in the headers. But a float4, for, for instance, is just a vec float4. Um, so this is a nice shorthand that we can use. OK, we can construct them with 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, and so on. Um, yeah, this should, be a, this should actually be a float2. OK, this should be float 2, so then it's 2 and 3. Um, and then we can construct a float 4 with a, a float 2 in the middle of it. Um, and we can also construct it with some you know, a scalar value that all of the, the, the values in our, in our vector type will be initialized to. 
Okay. So yeah, we have lots of operators. We can do lots of math functions. You can do, you know, sickle sine with a sickle vec type. You can multiply them, add them. You can do whatever you can do really with scalar values. So they, they can be very, very handy. Um, we don't have guarantees that these operations will actually be vectorized, that the, they'll kind of be used, um, that, or that they'll map down to vector instructions in the back end. Um, quite often with GPUs, they do not map to uh, actual vector instructions, but vector loads, vector stores, they can be better than, than non-vectorized loads and stores. Um, yeah, so swizzles, we can essentially get uh, individual elements out of our vector. Okay, this can be useful. So we want to get elements zero and three. So we get um, that and that. Okay. Um, yeah, or one and two, and we get the we get the the middle ones. Um, okay. So oh yeah, sorry. The swizzle of that is equal to that. So we reassign. Uh, so this returns a reference to these individual elements and then we can we can store the nine nine in the middle oh here quick question yeah uh, are these vector types stored as registers a guarantee to store as registers um that's a very good question i think uh so they're 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 in private memory so they're going to be either um stored as registers or if we have some registers spilling then it will it, the same thing will happen with these vector types as it would for for scalar types and that it'll overflow into um cuda cuda local memory which is essentially global memory uh which is private to each each work item um so we we don't have any more guarantees that these will stay in registers than we would have if they were just normal normal scalar um scalar variables Sure, thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, so yeah, we can also get the, say the XW component, that kind of thing. There are lots of ways to do these uh, simple swizzles. These are quite nice. Um, yeah, they can be a bit of a, a headache to um, implement as well, unfortunately. Okay, so when we, when we use the vectorized, um, when we use the vector types, our performance gets better again. Okay, so our performance is uh, faster again. So this is essentially because we're using vectorized loads and stores. Um, so we can, you can, you can load in a single step, even though you're loading within a single, say, cache line per uh, per uh, per subgroup. Uh, you, you're using less instructions because you're using these vector instructions. Okay, so this is. This is a, a good thing. Okay, um, I think so. You can you can look at the code. Or sorry, sorry. Uh, before we do that, yeah, well, let's look at the MRA class. Um, so the MRA class that this was introduced uh, because the VEC class uh, has a lot of legacy from OpenCL that maybe SQL isn't that happy with. Um, some of the things to do with say padding. Uh, another thing as well, so in CUDA, we have, say, a float3 class um, or float3 you know, type alias, uh, but this does not have any padding. So if you're porting from CUDA to SQL, uh, you need to be aware of this. Uh, and instead of maybe using a float3, you should use an MRA3 because this is not uh, MRA float3. So this doesn't have any padding. Um, and this doesn't, the, the size of your MRA is not confined to 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 16. It can be whatever size you want with no padding. So this is, this is quite handy. Um, yeah, and we don't require the swizzle. Um, and writing two elements in this is, is allowed. Um, yeah, so we also have aliases uh, as part of the, the spec. Uh, um, so we have m float 4. Uh, uh, and that's just an MRA float for. So again, this is in the SQL namespace. Um, yeah, any questions on these vector types or vectorization in general? <laughs> 